Hello! Today we shall talk about uh, a special series, special power series called Taylor series and, tel and then Taylor's formula. Now, we start with this uh, observation, which uh, we can call a theorem. Theorem. Suppose we have power series written this way coefficient cn x minus a power n, which is convergent uh, when x minus a is less than r. So this series has um, uh, interval convergence r and it's convergent between uh, a plus r, a minus r in this interval. It's centered at a. This is interval centered at a and the power series convergent like that. In this case, uh, we can say that uh, the coefficient c sub n can be written like the nth derivative of the function at a divided by n factorial. Uh, this is uh, very easy to show. Uh, let's write this series in expanded form. fx will be c0, uh, n is uh, 0 here, I forgot to write n goes from 0 to infinity. Uh, okay, uh, then we have c1 x minus a first power, c2 x minus a squared, c3 x minus a cubed, and it continues like that. In this uh, presentation, if, if we set x equals a, uh, fa, will be c0 because all differences here x minus o become zeros and this is what remains from uh, the series then we differentiate f prime x will be zero in the place of c0 c1 derivative x minus a just one then we have two times c2 x minus a then 3 times c3 x minus a squared. The next one will be uh, 4 times c4 x minus a cubed plus so on like to infinity. Again, when we set x equals a, we find that f prime a will be c1. All the others will be zeros. Repeat this again f second x will be 2 times c2 plus uh, 2 times 3 times c3 x minus a plus 4 times uh, 3 times 4 times let's write it uh, this way plus 3 times 4 times c4 x minus a squared plus 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 and when x equals a we have from here f second a will be 2 times c2 and the others will be zeros uh, this can be written like 2 factorial c2 in the next step uh, repeating the same procedure, differentiating setting x equals a. The next step will give f third a equals, we can see uh, from this place what will come, there will be 2 times 3 times c3, which we can write 3 factorial c3. In the next step, we shall get full derivative. I'm writing this uh, Roman number for derivative a, or we can also write f4 in parentheses like that. This will be 4 factorial c4. And continuing like that, n times nth derivative at a will be n factorial c sub n. And from here we see that uh, c sub n will be f n derivative a over n factorial. 
and then we can replace this in the place of C sub n and we have the expansion the series representation sigma f n derivative of a over n factorial x minus a nth power and goes from zero to infinity i will put this in a green box this is what we call taylor series taylor series now a very reasonable question is if we have a function which is uh, differentiable uh, infinitely many times as many times as we want on some um, interval uh, can we represent the function like that in taylor series and uh, here come we come to taylor's formula taylor's formula Uh, suppose uh, the function is differentiable n plus 1 times in some interval uh, x minus a less than r, such symmetrical interval, then uh, we can write this formula. fx will be uh, sigma fk at a over k factorial x minus a power k and k will change from 0 to n plus r n x uh, so we have partial sum of the taylor series and this partial sum we call t sub n we call it taylor polynomial taylor polynomial centered at a of degree n and uh, what stands here this term is called remainder formal definition is that the remainder of order n is uh, fx minus taylor polynomial degree n so the remainder is indicate the difference between uh, these two now i shall write this in expanded form uh, and I shall write the remainder is also in more specified form. Uh, in extended form, we have fx will be when uh, we have n equals 0, fa plus f prime a over 1 factorial. Our factorial is 1, but I'm writing this for symmetry. x minus a plus f second a over 2 factorial x minus a squared plus f third derivative at a 3 factorial x minus a cubed plus continuing like that uh, f n derivative at a n factorial x minus a power n so up to here we have the Taylor's polynomial of order n and then comes the remainder which is can be written like that the n plus first derivative at some number c uh, i shall explain this later over n plus one factorial x minus a power n plus one c is a number between x and a c is between x and a and remember a was the center of the interval where this happens uh, everything happens uh, in the interval x minus a less or equal to r an absolute value so what you see here is uh, taylor's formula again we put this in green i have written this especially in expanded form uh, and uh, you can do this for every n uh, so if we want uh, to increase n to infinity 
we uh, we have to study the remainder. If the remainder approaches zero, the function can be expanded in Taylor series. This uh, uh, happens with uh, most good functions like exponential function, uh, sine, cosine, logarithm. Uh, there are functions where this doesn't happen, which are not represented by Taylor series. It's a very special, very rare functions. So I want to repeat this again. If the function has n plus one derivative in the interval like this, symmetrical, we can write uh, Taylor's formula. So we list, uh, we write the Taylor polynomial of order n, uh, and uh, after it comes the remainder. This is the remainder here. Uh, which has this special form, uh, n plus first derivative at c, c is some unknown number between x and a, so when we, it also depends on n, if we change n this will change. Uh, now we really want to know uh, if this remainder decreases to approaches zero, has limit zero when n grows, and there is such an estimate It's called Taylor estimate. If uh, the n plus first derivative of the function in absolute value less or equal to m, some constant, in the interval x minus a less than r, then we can estimate the remainder r and x in absolute value. Uh, look at the remainder here. If we take absolute value, uh, on the top we can put m, and here we have m plus 1 factorial in denominator, which is positive, no absolute value, and here x minus a power m plus 1. Very important estimate when the n plus first derivative is bounded. Here again, green box for this estimate. Now, I want to show you examples. Take a very important, very actually simple function, fx to be e to the x, and let's take a to be simply zero. Uh, all derivatives of this function are the same. And uh, n plus first derivative x will be e x itself. And uh, if we have some bounded interval, let's have interval x less than r, uh, then over this interval n plus first derivative x, an absolute value, which is e to the x, no uh, need of uh, absolute value because this is always positive. This will be less or equal e power r. It's an increasing function, so this is the value at the uh, end, uh, the right end of this interval, and uh, it is the largest value, so we can take this for m, uh, and then uh, the remainder will be less or equal this m over m plus 1 factorial and uh, just x and x itself is less than r so this will be less or equal m r m plus 1 factorial r here is fixed and when n grows to infinity, uh, this remainder in absolute value will approach zero, r sub n, sorry here, I forgot this sub index, when uh, n grows to infinity. And then uh, if we take n growing to infinity in Taylor's formula for the function ex, so let's write uh, 
Taylor's formula for this function, x will be uh, if zero, which is uh, one, plus uh, uh, first derivative at zero is also one, one over one factorial just x, plus one over two factorial derivative, all derivatives at zero, uh, the same function e x at zero will be one, and here we have x squared plus 1 over 3 factorial x cubed plus 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 1 over n factorial x power of n and plus this remainder which will be and it sum a e I can write c n plus 1 factorial x n plus 1 and as we saw the remainder is bounded and approaches 0 when x is restricted and n grows to infinity and from here uh, taking n to grow to infinity, we have this expansion. E x will be 1 plus, I shall write here, x over 1 factorial like that for symmetry, x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus, 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 plus like that to infinity. This infinite power series represents the exponential function. I shall put this important expansion also in green. We shall talk also the expansions of the other important functions like sine, cosine, uh, and uh, we shall do some applications in the next lecture. Now at the end I want to just mention one about terminology. In uh, Taylor series when uh, a is uh, zero, when it's centered at zero, it's called Maclaurin series. So it looks like that. Taylor series centered at A equals zero is called Maclaurin series. Sometimes in Casual language is just tail series. And it looks like this. For every function, the tail series centered at zero is written this way. N derivative at zero or n factorial x power n from zero to infinity in expanded form. We have x f zero f prime zero over one times x f second zero two factorial x squared plus 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 like that to infinity uh, so uh, we're going to see what are the Maclaurin series for the sine and cosine functions and uh, for the logarithm and arctangent some already familiar functions. Okay, uh, this will continue in the next lecture. Goodbye.